Hi everyone, uh, this is Elias Martin, and I am the owner and founder of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. So uh, I thought it'd be something. I thought it'd be really neat to uh, do a vlog, a weekly vlog on Japanese prints, and um, you know, so it, I decided to call it Woodblock Wednesday, and you know, I thought every Wednesday I'd, I'd discuss some elements about Japanese prints or, or discuss some prints that I've either have come across or have acquired or are for sale or anything, but a, a topic that relates to Japanese prints. And I thought it would be neat to do, it, it, hopefully it would help with the sort of uh, getting through the week. So we're Wednesday, it's hump day. And so maybe this is a little uh, shot of uh, an injection of interest into your week that helps you get over the, the difficult week. So what I've done is I pulled a couple prints uh, that I have available. They're both, uh, all of the prints you'll see today are available for sale. And today's sort of conversation was inspired by the Art Institute of Chicago. And they, they have a, a really neat exhibition of prints. Uh, it's called Connoisseurship of Japanese Prints. And basically, the Art Institute shows several, well, at least two or three impressions of different, of the same design. So, for example, uh, they have three impressions of the Great Wave. And so they discuss uh, and they highlight differences of, of each impression. And so I thought, well, that's, that was a really neat exhibition. So if you haven't seen it and you're in Chicago or you're going to um, make a visit to Chicago, I, I recommend that exhibition. Uh, so I, I'm, sort of <clears throat> I'm sort of inspired by that. And so today I'm going to show you two designs by two different Shinhanga artists that use the same woodblock matrix um, to create a design, but they're actually very different um, in, in the way they were doing it. So uh, with, without further ado, I'm going to flip the camera over and discuss some art. So the first print I'd like to talk about is by Hiroshi Yoshida. He was a 20, early 20th century Japanese printmaker, and uh, basically he it was a Shinhanga artist, and he designed uh, the print, but then woodblock carvers and woodblock printers would actually produce the print um, for him. He was one of those rare Shinhanga artists that actually started his own studio, and in some cases there are a lot of prints out there that he printed himself. Uh, but the woodblock carving, generally speaking, was given to artisans and, and, and also, by and large, the printing uh, went to artisans as well. And this is a early design for him. This was done in the mid-twenties and it's of Wetterhorn. It's a European subject. Uh, it, this Wetterhorn is uh, a beautiful mountain uh, that is in the Swiss Alps, and Hiroshi Yoshida was an avid uh, mountain climber, so he, he was really fascinated by the mountains, particularly those in Europe, and decided to, you know, capture them in woodblock prints. And so in this particular print, this is the standard uh, version you would see. It's the commercial version that he basically decided to, to mass produce in his studio. Uh, but I'd like to show you two other impressions that are very different. And, um, and hopefully this will highlight sort of the process in which prints are made. And um, also, it, it also it, we, we could discuss a little bit about how artists decide how to do prints and why. Um, you know, Hiroshi Shida was a uh, artist by trade. He was a commercial artist. And so uh, also economic concerns were important for him. And so, you know, there was always this, this balance of producing compelling artwork, beautiful artwork, but at the same time producing something that could be done, uh, that could be replicated over and over again so that um, you know, he could produce things in an economic, economical viable way for his studio. So 
the first work here is actually a trial print. And it's of Wetterhorn, but it's the really earliest printing of this design. And this was probably printed by the artist himself. And um, you'll see that there's, this is his Jizuri seal in red. And it basically that means that he supervised or actually printed the work. In this case, I actually think Yoshida printed this, uh, this in, impression. Below here is his trial seal. And that basically is a stamp that says, uh, this is uh, a trial, we're working things out. And usually the impressions that are trial sealed uh, impressions are fantastic. They're not uh, commercial. They're, they have a lot more work, um, more colors. There's variations in how the colors are applied on the, on the paper. And so they're a lot more labor intensive. So in this print, you'll see there is this wonderful gradation of color in the, the mountain. And the, it goes from light to dark, and then you get the purples in there. And also the, the, the field here in green, it has a really nice looseness to it. And all of these qualities are actually quite hard to do. And it's something that the printer has to keep working with the, the, the print on. I mean, you have to print this sort of this blue, uh, this like, I would call that like kind of haziness. That, that is not just one impression. You have to go back and keep printing this with a lot of care. That takes a lot of time. And so the amount of time uh, that was required to produce this print is substantially more than the finished commercial print. And we'll go back to that. Now, the next impression is still an early uh, impression by Yoshida. This was probably done by his studio. And the colors here are less intense. And there's some areas where the color is changed. Like in the clouds here, that's more of a gray. Whereas in the first um, early impression, that's, that's kind of a, a pinkish uh, color. And also the, the bokashi, the gradation, the haziness, it's still there, but it's not as pronounced. So going back to the earlier one, you'll see how, how really beautifully Cat the he how beautifully uh the artist captured the atmospheric quality around the mountain i mean it, it's it's great it's beautiful it's it, it almost looks like a photo uh, in, in some ways and here it's a little bit flatter it's still beautiful but uh that you could see that the artist here were where the woodblock printmakers were were uh were not as fastidious so in this early impression again printed by probably Yoshida and um oh okay sorry about that my phone was telling me rotate uh so anyway so basically this area was so uh focused on by the printers that they were really able to capture this wonderful atmospheric quality here they've done that but it's it's a lot less um nuanced so a lot less work but the colors are still very vibrant beautifully done and this is the last version, still an early version. These were done in the mid twenties, uh, mid to late twenties. And you'll see on this copy, it's sort of a compromise between the early one and the, the second state. So you see in the clouds, the, the sort of the pink or the lavender is kind of back. Uh, the atmospheric quality is still there. But the, the fuzziness, the haziness that you see so pronounced on the very early impression is less pronounced here and much less pronounced on, on this copy. And again, that, 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 that effect is very labor intensive and, you know, it, it's, it's also not economically viable to produce, you know, Yoshida produce hundreds of impressions of this design and to spend as much time that was required on this impression would not be econo economically viable. He also had other designs he was producing in the studio. So this is a really rare impression that's early that you would, you would see uh, his first version of what the print might look like. And it's a wonderful this the, the three of them put together is a wonderful opportunity to see sort of the artistic process at work. Where at the last one, 
uh, you, you see the compromises he made. It's still beautiful and worthy of owning. I mean, I mean if this were my print, I'd very, be very proud of it. But to, to see it in context with the artistic process of the very earliest impression, you, you, you kind of get a new sense of appreciation for the, the process that goes into making these prints. And so in a, in a moment, I'm just going to focus on each print again and let you have a look and then we'll discuss uh, another design. The other thing I'd like to mention uh, for you, uh, for Yoshida collectors out there, the nuances about the different printings, um, usually what people have come to understand is his Jizuri seal that's in red. That Those impressions tend to be more experimental, more brightly um, done. The colors are much more vibrant and, and bright. It, it's just a matter of taste. And he, he typically, on the red Jizuri ones, his, the coloration of the design is much, much brighter. Uh, the other interesting thing is that some people have speculated that the red Jizuri sealed impressions were more uh, uh, likely to go out west. He had a, a large um, audience in the United States who was, they were very active in collecting his work. And you'll see here, it, it, his signature is in pencil, it's titled, in pencil in, in, what, in the Western script. And of course there's the title here in Japanese. There's his script signature with his chop. And also there's a, a title there um, in Japanese uh, and then, oh, the date. And uh, again, the, the seals. The second impression I have here, still very early, but this is a the so-called brown Jizuri seal. It's a little less uh, pronounced, um, and the colorations on brown jazeera seals are also brighter, but not as bright as the, the, the reds. We still have his pencil signature and, the, and the, the, the title in pencil, but on the third version, which is a little bit later, this is just your regular jazeera seal, and you're not going to see the, the pencil written um, title or his signature. So, I mean, this is done by hand, this script of his signature and seal, that, that's done by hand. And so if it was destined for the Japanese market, it would be redundant to write his signature here and then also here because his Japanese clients were expecting to see the, the signature in the print as opposed to written outside. So it, it's kind of an interesting case study here where these three prints uh, support that theory on how Yoshida signed his prints and in the way that they were uh, produced uh, in terms of the intensity of the coloration. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a neat trio here. Now the, the next design, and this is the last one we'll discuss, is by Hirawaki and Takahashi Hirawaki or Shote. And um, he, like Hiroshi Yoshida, was a Shinhanga artist. And he was, in this particular case, he was hired by Watanabe to produce this design. And, uh, and then Watanabe, uh, the publisher, basically hired artisans uh, to carve the blocks and print the prints. So this was done in a collaborative process. Um, <clears throat> So this design depicts Mount Fuji 
in the rain um, right by a river uh, bed. It, it's quite beautiful. And, and I'll zoom in um, carefully over the design so you could see the intricate carving. The water, the lines in the water are just amazing. Even the, the work on the rocks um, is it, just astounding the amount of time that was uh, taken to cr create this design on, on a woodblock. I mean, when you look at this, you really see the, the, the sort of the, the potential of what woodblock prints can produce. And, you know, as woodblock collectors would tell you, the woodblock medium is probably one of the best mediums um, that captures the atmospheric qualities of the environments. So as we saw in Hiroshi Ishida's Wetterhorn with that sort of um, soft, cloudy, uh, foggy quality around the mountain, here we get a, a similar quality, but with the rain. It's quite beautiful. And um, this is a rare uh, double O bond size print. So just so you could get a sense of scale, here it is the Yoshida print, and this is the Hiroaki print. It's double the size of a of a Oban. So basically, the Oban sheet would would go like this, and there's enough room to put another um, piece of paper there. So. It's a double Oban size. And just quickly, I'll go over to the next print. Exactly the same design. The same uh, woodblock matrix was used to, to print this uh, impression. But the printers chose different colors and different printing techniques to capture the, the different uh, sort of, it's basically the same subject, but at different time. Uh, so this is autumn. You could see the 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 color change there in the in the vegetation, the trees. Uh, you know, actually, the funny thing is they they kept the little. It almost looked like little berries, but little leaves there. But uh, what what's different is obviously there's no rain. The color is different on the on the vegetation there, and then of course this blue, this sort of nice beautiful. Uh, pale blue that's in the background. I mean, it gives a sense of a uh, autumnal sort of chill in the air. It's, 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 it's quite beautiful. So I'm going to zoom in so you could kind of see the, the wonderful carving that went into this block. You could look at the waves there. It's just amazing the amount of carving that went into it. And of course, right here is quite nice. So I'll move back to the next, the other one, so you could see the differences. The coloration of the water is similar, but in the autumn scene, the water is a little bit more blue. And here in, in the sort of early spring rain scene, it has a little bit more of a green um, tint to it. So it's, it's really interesting. I'm gonna see if I can back up and I could show both of them. I'm not quite sure if I can. Kinda. Now, if you're interested in seeing these uh, sort of without a moving hand, uh, obviously I'm not the best camera person, um, but uh, both of these are up on my website, collectingjapaneseprints.com. 
and there, there are some really good scans of them side by side, so you could see the, the print. And so if you click on the image, it blows up the image on my website, and you're, you're able to see both of them side by side. Um, so, but you know, I, I think it's really neat uh, to be able to just sort of compare both of them. So uh, I just wanted to sort of recap. We looked at two uh, artists today, uh, Hiroshi Ushida and Takakashi uh, Hirowaki or Shote. And these two artists were Shinhanga artists that were working in the early part of the 20th century. Uh, the Hirowaki print was done in the 30s and the Yoshida print was done in the, in the, in the 20s. And basically these two prints uh, you know, show the ability of the woodblock print um, artists to produce different effects using the same uh, blocks. And, uh, you know, I was inspired by the Art Institute's current exhibition, Connoisseurship in Japanese Prints. And so I encourage everyone, if you're in Chicago or are going to pay, pay a visit to someone in Chicago, stop by the museum to have a look. There's uh, three wonderful great waves side by side. So it's not every day you could see the great wave, but it, in triplicate uh, side by side. And anyway, so I'm going to be doing this every Wednesday. We're uh, at 1 p.m. Chicago or Central Standard Time. And uh, I'll just be discussing Japanese prints uh, in, you know, in whatever, you know, whatever comes to, to mind. And, and so we'll be sharing some really interesting prints and, and I look forward to, you know, answering questions. You know, feel free to comment on the video after I post it. And I'm happy to reply to questions or suggestions. I'm happy to show artwork that you may not be as familiar with. Um, so just let me know uh, what you would like to see. And we'll, we'll do this every Wednesday. So thank you all for, for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you again next Wednesday.